I don't know, dude. It's it's just kind of embarrassing. I feel like I sometimes have it all together and sometimes I just have no idea what I'm going to create next. But that's because you're not listening hard enough. There's an ambience, a sound that you can hear if you just take a second and breathe. Do you hear it? Uh, just breathe very deeply and then don't make a sound. You'll hear it, trust me. Okay, okay, all right, here we go. Liquid metal on a graphics card. What? Liquid metal on a graphics card. Nah. Nah. All right. All right, I think uh, we're gonna realize very quickly why this isn't such a good idea. Not that it's a bad idea, and I will have to double check and make sure that the cooler Gigabyte's using uh, for this card is not aluminum. You see, the liquid metal we're gonna use in today's video reacts with aluminum. It's actually the same liquid metal that we used when we deleted our i9 CPU. You can check out that video right here. Uh, but because of that concern, I wanna make sure that this cooler doesn't have any aluminum contacting the GPU die directly. Doesn't appear as though that's the case. Most of these beefier cards are going to have copper or nickel-plated copper blocks, uh, and then with integrated um, aluminum fins, if you will, that attach to it. It's really no different than a traditional CPU uh, cooler if it's like a copper base and then aluminum fin. That tends to be how it is, and that's because aluminum doesn't hold on to heat as, as much as copper does, so it actually is a better dissipator of heat, although copper is a better conductor of it, and that's why you see copper blocks and aluminum fins. So a little bit of backstory there. Uh, this cooler, by the way, from Gigabyte appears to be an aluminum fin cooler, but with a solid copper base, which means that we're gonna be okay, I expect, when we uh, take this thing apart and apply our liquid metal compound. All right, so we'll need, of course, the Gigabyte cooler. We do have the Conductonaut kit. This comes with an application tool as well as a cleaning kit of sorts. Uh, and of course, liquid metal's in there. And then I also have a paper towel just to clean up some of the initial uh, thermal compound that'll be on the cooler. And then a small tool set to help us get into the graphics card. These bits in here, these screws tend to be rather small. And that's why a kit like this will do us just fine. Now I wanna start first with the back plate. I think this will be pretty straightforward. Some back plates are integrated with the coolers in the front though. And that's something you gotta watch out for. So I'm just gonna remove as many screws as I can and just keep going. Uh, but starting with the back first, because this will block a lot of those other screws underneath that are pressed against the PCB, likely holding the cooler against the GPU. So back plate first. These are gonna be fairly small Phillips screws. Not a problem. I expect these four right here are holding the cooler directly uh, against the, the GPU die. By the way, while we're doing this, I went ahead and took the liberty of uh, testing the card beforehand, so before the liquid metal application, just to see, because it's the whole point of this video after all, if the liquid metal makes any difference. And I expect that it'll make a small difference, but not as big a difference, of course, uh, as it would swapping out the TIM that's included in stock Intel chips. And that's because Intel chooses the absolute worst compound known to man to use between the die and the IHS of that uh, CPU. You know, sometimes you can just give this a little force and usually the, the GPU paste and even the thermal pads will help adhere the cooler to the card even without any screws attached to the cooler. So um, yeah, I should have checked that earlier on, but if you just pull it apart, be careful, you don't wanna flex the PCB at all. Uh, you can see here we have a perfectly detached cooler from the PCB, save the back plate, which is still on here, but it's not really gonna affect our ability to remove and replace the thermal compound. So we'll go ahead and clean this up and then we will reapply with liquid metal. You know, as I'm cleaning this, I'm noticing that the thermal compound already on here stock is not that bad. The consistency is about what I'd expect from like MX4, you know, Arctic MX4 paste. So maybe that's attributed in part to the fact that this is a brand new card, but I've replaced brand new GPU paste before and a lot of it's been pretty disgusting. So uh, good on Gigabyte here to include stuff that's not crap out of the box. Um, and again, we're gonna keep cleaning this off. We wanna get as much of it off as possible before we apply the liquid metal because that stuff's gonna get really messy in its own right. 
uh, and we don't want any of this preventing that liquid metal from making perfect contact with the cooler or the uh, die underneath. All right, so you can see we cleaned up quite a bit of that. Now I'm going to use the included cleaning kit with the conduct knot stuff. It just has a couple alcohol pads in it. I'm gonna clean up the rest of this paste around the die and then we will apply the liquid metal. Now, one thing I've definitely noticed is that the Turing dies, the equivalent Turing dies, are much bigger than Pascal dies, which means we're going to need to apply a lot more liquid metal uh, to this entire surface area. So all of this is going to generate a heat and we wanna make sure we cover all of it as evenly as possible uh, so that we get an even distribution of heat and heat transfer to the cooler. Now, something else to note is that conductonaut is, of course, conductive, which means you don't want this stuff coming into contact with anything that it's not supposed to. We just want to cover the die. We don't want it touching any of these smaller bits around the GPU. Uh, we, of course, don't want it touching anything else on the PCB. So we're going to be very careful about how we apply this. Uh, and because Turing is so large and because these smaller components on the, on the GPU are so close to the die, we're going to have to be especially careful that uh, none of this stuff touches any of those other components. Okay, so die is as clean as it's going to get, and we're going to apply the liquid metal now. Uh, this is, uh, again, a much larger surface area, so I, I expect we're going to need about twice as much as we've used in the past for, say, the 8700K D-Lid. Maybe as much, if not slightly more, than we used for the i9 D-Lid. Uh, so I'm just going to apply a small amount here, and then we'll spread it as much as we can. I think that's a good start. You can see it just kind of balls up like that. We're gonna take one of these little applicator tools, literally just Q-tips, and we're gonna spread this out as much as we can. I'm gonna start with the right side over here. No, no, this is no time. This is no time for a cat. This is important business. I could fry a $900 card, $800 card. This one's a little cheaper than the Asus one. Still spreading. Again, I want to be very careful not to get, let this stuff run over the edge of the die. That's the mirrored part in the center of the chip. We do not want this stuff touching those smaller bits around the die. And I think I've just about spread out this as much as I can, given what we put on there. I might need to add a little more. Let's see how far we can take this. All right, now I'm pretty sure I have covered the entire die. Let me center it up there. See, the entire die looks to be covered. I'm, I've never done this before. I've never uh, applied liquid metal to a graphics card. I figured Turing would be a chance for me to kind of go all in here and uh, just put it all on the line, all 800 bucks or so with the hardware that Gigabyte sent me, and uh, just wing it. I don't even know if this is worth it. I have no idea if temperatures are even going to drop by that significant an amount to where it might be worth it for some of you. So maybe the card runs cooler, maybe it runs quieter as a, as a result. How quieter though? I don't know because I've never done this before. Uh, and I don't even know if I'm going to fry the card. Maybe when we apply the cooler back to the other side, it's going to kind of push this liquid metal into those smaller bits and then we'll fry the chip and the whole board's dead. So it's one big risk, but I figured Turing would be a cool place to start because this is the new hot thing right now. Um, not, <laughs> not literally, um, but uh, something that would catch you guys' attention. So let's see, I'm gonna apply more liquid metal to the cooler side of this. You can see uh, we have the bare copper here. I'm gonna apply liquid metal to that just to make sure we have proper contact on both sides. And then we'll put it all back together and run our temperature tests. A few moments later. Okay, so to keep the story short and sweet, I couldn't apply liquid metal to the bare copper. It just wouldn't stick. I probably could have realized this if I had done a bit of research, but I wanted to do this firsthand, you know, and, and document without knowing much about this at all, just so that I could learn firsthand. I think that's something that's important for a lot of people. Uh, we don't really get that much anymore. We, we just look things up on the internet and that's how we learn. Uh, but I wanted to do it. Uh, again with my own hands just so that I could see for myself what happens if I try to do something that doesn't work So we're just gonna stick this cooler back onto the die and hope that liquid metal makes proper contact with the cooler Anyway, if it doesn't we'll know by the temperatures the car will run a lot hotter uh, But if the temperatures are lower then we'll consider it a successful liquid metal application and uh, who knows Maybe I'll even recommend this although I doubt it. All right, so this is actually a pretty simple card to take apart now that I've done it uh, up front and I realize that there are only about seven screws to remove in order to get to the GPU. So that's actually really nice. It's the nice thing about this card. A lot of cards overcomplicate. I know EVGA cards in the past have been very difficult to take apart. Uh, not that they expect you to take them apart so they make it easier for you, but if you ever want to get down and dirty under there, 
you know, it's nice to only have to worry about seven or so screws. So good on Gigabyte for that aspect of this card. Okay, so the card is back together. And now for the moment of truth, I'm gonna put this back into our test bench, the same one we used in the last video, and hope that it even posts to begin with. I would be totally fine if this card posted, but then got too hot. It would just mean that we aren't making proper contact with the cooler. Although I expect we we are. I don't, I would be surprised if it's not contacting the cooler properly. Uh, I would honestly be more surprised if this card even posted to begin with. So let's do that and uh, cross our fingers. That's really all we can do at this point. Okay, I've got the system set up. Uh, Pepsi's over there chewing cables. Wow, my white balance is so off on this camera. And we're going to power it on right now. Okay, it's lighting up, that's a good thing. Fans are kicking in. By the way, the monitor's on the ground. Don't make fun of me, I just have no space in this office anymore that everything's set up. All right, so F1 2017 is uh, loading up right now. I use this benchmark loop to stress test graphics cards. And uh, this one is actually not turning its fans at all at the moment. That's a good sign. It means that the card, when not stressed, uh, has its temps in check. So you can see they're just idling, not moving at all. And uh, now we're going to start the benchmark and see just how hot this card gets under load. Check the deltas with the test I ran before. I recorded this video and uh, see just how hot it gets. I wanna make sure that the in-game settings are identical just for consistency's sake. We'll benchmark Australia, heavy rain. Um, we can show the frame rate counter, that's fine. And we'll loop it and let's start the test. Well, pretty much what I expected. This card did not benefit at all, really, from liquid metal application. We saw a one degree delta, but that's to be assumed within the margin of error. And that's a testament as well to the fact that many factors of graphics cards are not putting absolute crap between their dies and their coolers. Not so much the degree that we equate this to Intel uh, and their terrible thermal interface material being sandwiched between their IHSs and dies. So what I want you to take away from this is that liquid metal application on most graphics cards is an absolute waste of time. Now, if you have a really old card and it's just got really chalky thermal paste and you know it needs to be replaced, then maybe you might could make a case for liquid metal application, but honestly, you're gonna be just as fine using something like MX4 uh, and, and that's gonna cost you a lot less. It won't be as, you know, time consuming to spread out and it, you don't have to risk any of your components around the die frying, which will essentially render your graphics card a brick, a really expensive brick more than likely. So I'm glad this card still works, but I mean, this was ultimately just a big waste of time. And that's why you don't see people left and right replacing stock thermal compound and graphics cards with liquid metal. It makes no sense. The deltas are non-existent. We saw literally no change in the sound tests either. I mean, these, these cards sounded the same before and after because the temperatures were basically the same before and after. Uh, also, if you're wondering why this card ran cooler than our beefy ASUS card, it's because the ASUS card was running at a higher clock speed. Uh, so around 2000 megahertz out of the box, whereas this one was running at about 1900 out of the box, pretty consistent. And the temperatures leveled out pretty much where I expected them to, given those clock speeds. So I hope that uh, if you didn't learn something, you at least found this video slightly entertaining, but if you were curious as to whether or not liquid metal application on the graphics card was viable in the first place, it is not. And if anybody says otherwise, reference this video to them, at least for any new-ish card, liquid metal application makes no sense. Uh, so I'm glad we were able to confirm that in today's video. I don't want you guys wasting your time. That's part of the reason why I went ahead and just followed through with these tests. Uh, also, I wanna say that the Gigabyte card is a really nice one. Uh, this this card did appear to be slightly louder than I expected in our sound test because there is a fair degree of coil whine with this, at least this specific card here. Um, there wasn't any coil whine that I could hear uh, from the ASUS card. So uh, this one here, a little bit more coil whine. Again though, when your case is closed and everything's running and especially under load, you're not really going to hear the coil whine as much. Uh, it's just where I had the mic placed when we were running these sound tests that it became a little more noticeable, especially during playback. Uh, the rest of the card is built very well. It's still a plastic shroud on top, but I like 
like the fact that Gigabyte got rid of the orange accents, so it matches pretty much any system, uh, any build you could potentially put together out there, black and gray pretty much match anything else. So that's a nice touch. It's a quiet card. It's a much cheaper card than the Asus card, but it's still expensive. It's still an RTX 2080, and you guys know how I feel about that. So please let me know in the comments section below what you think about these tests. If you've done something like this before and what your results were, I'd like to know the conditions in which those tests were run. If you like this video, give us more thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thumbs down for the opposite feeling, or if you hate everything about life, you guys click that red subscribe button. If you haven't already, become a member if you want to come special with it, and we'll catch you in the next one. I'm headed to Miami actually this weekend uh, for a bit of fun, and I will be back Monday making regular content again. So stay tuned for all of that good stuff. I might vlog in Miami, I don't know. Maybe I'll do that. You guys seem to be kind of on the fence about vlogs. Some of you really like them and some of you don't care at all. So maybe we'll experiment just a bit more in that realm. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.